Hello everybody, welcome to the video. That's right, we are gonna bury the motherfucking marks. Here we go. Today's topic, a lack of WWE talent. Now, this means two things. One, a lack of wrestlers that are quote-unquote talented. And then also, a lack of actual physical bodies to put on television, to put in the ring, to fill up the shows. Now... A lot of people are always critical of WWE saying the product right now is really bad. It stinks and all this other shit. I need to put this disclaimer out there right away. As far as World Wrestling Entertainment, World Wrestling Federation, Worldwide Wrestling Federation, before WWE became a nationwide, worldwide phenomenon, it was a territory. It was the Northeast Territory in New York City, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C., it was just a territory. You had the biggest draws there because that's where the biggest population in the United States at the time was. But you have a Bruno San Martino, you have a Bob Backlund. Those guys were big in the Northeast Territory because of the fact that they were in New York City, which is considered the capital of the world, if you think about it. I mean, as far as media, money, publishing, everything, just if you're big in New York, you're known around the world. You know, the whole saying, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. It's 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 no more true than with wrestling. So you had like Bruno San Martino, who was very um, outspoken of saying that because the fact that he was a wrestler in New York, he was able to go all around the world and be a headliner because of just the media coverage of being the biggest wrestler in the most bustling, hustling fucking city in the world. So when Vince McMahon Jr. bought it from his father Sr., he obviously started right away with Hulk Hogan and WrestleMania and he copied other promoters and took other promoters talents but he put it on a huge global scale he he put so much money behind it in the marketing the investing you know the endorsements he did a lot i mean everyone always can, can criticize vince mcmahon saying well he's not a creative genius and you know he's not really good at this wrestling thing you know he really is kind of like you know inherited it from his father well he actually bought it from his father he didn't inherit it but obviously you know i'm sure he got a good deal but this is true vince mcmahon did not create hulk hogan hulk hogan was already hulk hogan independently around the world at awa in japan before um he ever stepped foot with vince mcmahon senior or junior he did not create Sergeant Slaughter. He did not create the Iron Sheik and all this other things. You know, yes, it was a talent raid. And here's the thing, though. Vince McMahon knew promotion. And he decided, unlike the other territories that were just happy of being in a territory, he was the guy that says, I'm going to go to San Francisco. I'm going to go to Houston. I'm going to go to Japan. I'm going to go to Mexico. I'm going to go to England. I'm going to go to Toronto. I'm going to go eventually around the world. And I'm going to really get our product out there and that's the genius of vince mcmahon is this the simple idea of going global with a company because that's the way business especially in the united states of america was really starting to go is the markets in the world were turning into global markets you know chevy and ford automobiles are now being sold around the world Japanese automobiles were now becoming a huge thing in the United States of America because global markets were opening up. I mean, information was really starting to circle the globe. But as far as the product and the success of the wrestling, Vince McMahon has only had two periods of what are considered super successes where it's way above average because people think that wrestling is this you know money making machine because you hear about all these old timers oh we made a lot of money we made a lot of money but yeah where's your money now none of those guys are fucking sitting in mansions those guys are you know middle-aged people that are broke you know showing up at autograph signings for 200 bucks you know and they're they're working for nothing they're working for they depend on wwe legends contracts or they depend on doing podcasts and they depend on doing shoot interviews for literally just table scrap money so there th that money was not made okay people like Hulk Hogan made millions because he transferred into mainstream and a lot of people did become rich off the WWE marketing machine but most wrestlers back in the day didn't 
because wrestling has never been that successful. People always think about, oh, the Monday Night Wars, WCW, wrestling was at its best. They, that was a huge spike. Before that, it was a flat line. Monday Night War spike and then back to flat line. People are like, oh, see, the ratings are low. No, the ratings are the same as they've always been on the average. The percentage of people around the world or in the United States of America or in the UK or in Asia even, the percentage of people that watch wrestling on a regular basis has always been the same. It's it's never been a big ticket fucking draw. It may seem that way and they may tell you that, but it's never been a huge ticket draw. Compare WWE to the NFL. The NFL makes more money in one short season than WWE makes in five years. The World Soccer League, FIFA, just that that thing's a juggernaut compared to WWE. And WWE runs 365, 24-7 all around the globe. So you have to put it into perspective right now that WWE is not this freaking mega buster that's sitting on low times they're sitting right where they should be you know a two rating on television that's what wrestling normally gets it's it's not that popular folks it really isn't and we can get into why or why not so anyways to reiterate my point people claim that the product right now is just terrible because that's the reason the ratings are low is because the product stinks the product has always sucked wwe product has always sucked it's only been good during the heyday of Hulkamania from like 85 to like 1990. And then it was good like in the middle of the Attitude Era with Stone Cold Steve Austin. And you have to remember there was WCW competition at the time. And like I said, it's been two spikes. But other than that, yeah, the product has always sucked. Okay? It's always sucked. Look at the cartoon gimmicks that they were doing before the Attitude Era. Like Doink the Clown and Duke the Dumpster Rosie. I mean, look at The Undertaker for fuck's sakes. That guy came and started as an undertaker just wrap your head around he wore purple gloves he was a cartoon undertaker started out as a cartoon luckily he was able to reinvent himself and make that product work through the attitude era and he was able to like make it work now and then he also did the american badass thing which really he needed to do that because nobody wants to see 26 years of the same fucking gimmick but now he only wrestles once a year but it was a cartoon. It was targeted towards kids. It was crappy. It was lousy. Um, the parents watching with the kids were like, this This is silly, but hey, my kid likes it. I'll buy him the action figures. You know, it, it was rated PG back then. The gobbledygooker for fuck's sakes. I mean, all these ideas that, you know, Vince McMahon, oh, he's a, he's a genius and all that. He, pff, bull fucking shit. He came and Stone Cold Steve Austin, or I should say Steve Austin came to WWE. Um, he came in as a fucking jobber nobody. He was the fucking Zack Ryder of his day. You know, it was only by Stone Cold's severe work ethic and severe politicking that he was able to get that spot in WWE and keep that spot. Because trust me, they wanted Rock over Stone Cold every fucking day of the week because The Rock was more marketable. And case in point, if you look at their careers after wrestling, you look at The Rock's career and Stone Cold's career, nothing against Stone Cold, but Stone Cold's got all these little business ventures, but he's he's been stoop to reality tv the rock is a freaking mega blockbuster highest gross paid actor of 2015-16 um hollywood juggernaut he's the most successful wrestler of all fucking time because of what he was able to transcend and do after wrestling more than hulk hogan more than definitely more than stone cold steve austin no offense to stone cold steve austin i love his podcast i've never drank his beer but Pretty much a, a wrestler nowadays, if they're not wrestling, the best they can do in mainstream is reality TV. They, they, they don't do well in any other venue because they don't have the acting chops. You know, these guys are professional stunt doubles. They're not professional actors, you know. So people complaining about the product sucks and it stinks, you know. That's why the ratings are low. It's No, no. The product has always sucked. The ratings have always been low. The, a huge population of the world just does not watch wrestling. They, they never have. It's never been the most popular sport ever. This, though, however, kind of shines light on WWE and their lack of success with talent. 
Now, I'm going to really get into this right away. I know it's already been 10 minutes, but right away is um, I want to focus on the lack of actual talent in wrestling as far as wrestling ability. Um, Bret Hart said it best to be in WWE, to be on that platform because wwe is still head and shoulders above ring and honor tna you name it um wwe is the show it is it is a skyscraper compared to a freaking box on the sidewalk that a homeless dude lives in you compare any other promotion to wwe i mean don't get me wrong it's big it's a juggernaut it's not going anywhere okay the ratings may be down the buy rates may be down the wwe network may come and go i don't know but wwe is not going anywhere wwe is going to stay in business and be in business for a thousand fucking years if so long as they choose it's too big to fail um it's not going anywhere is it small if you compare it to its entertainment counterparts such as disney yes it is but it's not going anywhere but let's talk about the actual talent of wwe the wrestling talent now you have to remember what made wwe good as far as the talent as far as the product the entertainment value of it was the territory system when wwe was you know really booming from 85 to 90 with the first few wrestlemanias and all that he was using wrestlers and workers that were honed and developed because they worked the territory system everyone will always tell you the territory system was a huge learning tool to people because the way it worked was you either had to be good and good right away to keep your living or you went back to the factory that you came out of wherever you came from you know so you went from territory to territory really learning how to work um not just learning moves but how to play to the audience because every audience is different trust me the the crowds in los angeles are not the same as the crowds in chicago are not the same as the crowds in tupelo mississippi are not the same as the crowds in winnipeg canada are not the same as as the crowds in tokyo japan are not the same as london you know uh people in society and social norms and customs and what they want to see for entertainment are different wherever you go within the country especially in the united states because the united states is extremely diverse because it's such a big country really it really is a big country with you know what the things are spread out and whatnot montana is nothing like new york and new york is nothing like texas and texas is nothing like california california is nothing like missouri and missouri is nothing like florida so that's where the territory has really developed actual good entertaining entertaining talent that actually took people and turned them into workers they don't have that anymore and it really shows because during the attitude era yes the attitude era in my in my personal opinion i i didn't like it i i was watching wcw i did not like the attitude era i did not like that it was more about you know tits and ass and beer bashes than it was about the actual wrestling matches you know i know wrestling's fake but i still want to have it feel like a sporting exhibition at least a little bit i don't care about stone cold um dousing people in beer and doing all that shit i never cared about that to be honest i thought stone cold was a fucking terrible wrestler um he wasn't but by the time he got into that stone cold character after he broke his neck his wrestling style was for the time shit it was sloppy it was boring it was whatever but you still like the stone cold character so much that people got behind it but to be honest nah i i personally didn't like it but obviously i it doesn't matter what i think because things are at an all-time high right there so it obviously worked so what i think about it doesn't really matter but you had Shawn Michaels um, before he went away in 98. You had The Undertaker. You had Stone Cold. You had all these workers. And then you had WCW with all their workers. You had Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, Hulk Hogan. Um, all these guys getting their second run. But you had a lot of WCW original workers. Well, not they're not original WCW, but like Chris Jericho, Eddie Guerrero and stuff. The reason all that talent was so good is because they came up through the territories. Think about that. They they came up through territories. They don't have that nowadays. Nowadays, if you want to go to WWE, yeah, you wrestle the indies and 
is what it is, whether you're good or bad. But then you go to the WWE Performance Center and they turn you into a WWE wrestler. You know, they either strip you down of what you learned and, you know, put the places and pieces back in a different order to make you a WWE worker or whatever. Or they start you from nothing and they go from there. So they don't have the same long, arduous learning process that the Tori Tori system provided and spit out amazing, amazing workers, amazing wrestlers. Um, Vince Russo said it best because, you know, he was the head writer during the Attitude Era. And, I, yeah, I don't agree with his storylines, but he said it was actually really easy. You know how easy it is to write TV and the matches could match the storylines and all the angles going on. The matches could live up to those hypes and not be duds. Like, nowadays, the storylines are more powerful than the matches. The matches that culminate from the storylines are shit because, you know, the actual wrestling ability is not the same as the territory guys because it's really easy when you have a stone cold steve austin who may not be the best physical wrestler and you know he's no aj styles not 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 that he ever was but you know he's no hbk but he at least knew how to play the crowd all around the world and actually put together a match you know hbk knows how to put together a match undertaker knows how to put together a match because they came up and were trained in the territory system The lack of actual wrestling talent in the WWE right now, you could say, is at an all-time low. The the, the crowds and the people, it's, it's not the same. You can tell it's not the same as during the 85 to 90, during, you know, Austin and Rock and HBK and Undertaker. You can tell it's not the same. Um, The crowd's reactions are okay, but when it comes to WWE, the crowds are different. Because they can watch NXT and play along and get along with the product and be impressed whether the match is good or not. But then, as soon as they get to WWE, it's like, meh, they're not, it's not cool anymore. And I get that because, you know, that's why we call it burying marks because the internet marks are like this anti-mainstream thing where it's like, you know, oh, a wrestler could not change anything, but as soon as he hits WWE, oh, he's not good anymore. You know, as soon as he gets called up to Raw or SmackDown, he's not, all of a sudden, he's not cool anymore. We don't like him anymore. People used to like the Usos until, uh, you know, they're cousins with Roman Reigns until they got thrown in a storyline against AJ Styles and the Bullet Club against Roman Reigns and the Usos. That's a good storyline, Bullet Club versus the Anawahi family, right? One of the most powerful families in wrestling history, probably the most uh, influential family and um, largest wrestling family in wrestling against something as cool as the Bullet Club. I mean, that shit writes itself, but of course, all of a sudden, people don't like the Usos. Oh, all of a sudden, they're boring. All of a sudden, they're trite. And it's like, really? You liked them all the way up until a week before they fucking got with Roman Reigns. But, oh, I get it. We don't like Roman Reigns because he's getting pushed and he's not good. And Ambrose is better just because, oh, and Ambrose is an indie guy. And Seth Rollins, Cody, is an indie guy. So they're automatically better than Roman Reigns when really they're fucking not. You know, but it's just the Mark mentality. But as far as wrestling talent... Um, I will say that I think WWE is severely lacking. They're lacking that showstopper. They're lacking the the show stealer. Um, a lot of people blame WWE creative saying, oh, well, they're holding people back like Dolph Ziggler and stuff like that. And I, I think Dolph Ziggler is a showstopper. I really do. And I think he is getting held back. Because if you look at uh, 2016 SummerSlam, fourth match on the card is AJ Styles versus John Cena. That match stole the fucking show. Because, like him or not, John Cena knows how to fucking put on a match, especially now. AJ Styles, arguably the best wrestler in the fucking world. He is this generation's Shawn Michaels. He is this generation's Bret Hart. He is this generation's whatever. He's he's the best wrestler in the world the world in my opinion he is a wrestling god and i i mean i'm like trying to pause for dramatic effect just i'm trying to get that in aj styles is the best fucking wrestler in the world and and if everything goes right in his wwe career i think he'll go down as the greatest of all time i think he'll replace Shawn michaels on the mantle i really do he's a god 
So those two are capable of putting together a blockbuster match, right? Those two go out there and they steal the show every single time. Um, the payback match between AJ Styles and John Cena. That match was that match was a mid-card match. No title, nothing on the line, just, you know, whatever. And it had everything, including the ref getting knocked out or whatever. Or, um, excuse me, it was Battlegrounds, not Payback. Uh, AJ Styles wrestled Roman Reigns at Payback. And made him look like a million fucking dollars because he's AJ Styles. AJ Styles can make anyone look good. He is a broomstick wrestler. Which, once again, goes back to the point of the territory systems, which why all those guys from back in the day were so good is because they were broomstick wrestlers. They could go and wrestle a pile of bricks in the center of the ring and get it over. AJ Styles is can do that. And he is the only wrestler in WWE that can do that. He knows how to work. You can say this about Samoa Joe, Shinsuke Nakamura, Zami Zayn, Kevin Owens. They're, no. They can't do what AJ Styles does. AJ Styles has the athletic ability, but he also has the innate ability to actually work a match and get people just wherever he is, make a match and get people to to do what they should do, to have a sponsor. You know, and he did it as a face and he did it at a heel. He's only been in WWE for, you know, since the beginning of the year, the Royal Rumble. He's been in it for nine months and he's already gone, you know, from face to heel and he's gotten over at both. Twice in the same year. That's incredible. But back to my point is John Cena, AJ Styles, were able to steal the show fourth match on the card at SummerSlam 2016 before all the title matches, you know, before the world title, universal title, before Lesnar and Orton and all that everything, you know. That's crazy. They they stole the fucking show. That crowd was just rabid for it because it was AJ Styles and John Cena. But then if Dolph Ziggler goes out there with Dean Ambrose, do you think those guys are capable of stealing the show like Cena and AJ Styles did? I don't know if they could have a match that good just because of the tenure that Cena has and the fan following that AJ Styles has. But I still think they could have had a fucking blockbuster match you know what's considered a match of the year they could have had easily the 2016 match of the year but they didn't now here's the thing is it because wwe creative held them back held back Dolph Ziggler is holding back Dean Ambrose I think it is or is it because those guys can't go as good as AJ Styles and John Cena I don't think that's so much I don't think as far as the character development of Dean Ambrose um, that he's going anywhere. Uh, Dean Ambrose is like Jeff Goldblum. He only knows how to be that character. He only knows how to be himself. He only knows how to be Dean Ambrose. That character can only go so far. That character can't go up and down, side to side. It, you know, that character doesn't have 10 years of life. It doesn't. Um, it just doesn't. Dolph Ziggler... His character, you know, could change and he could go up and down. He's got a little more leeway character-wise. But as far as wrestling ability, there is no reason why those guys could not put on a show-stopping blockbuster match that would have took that crowd on a roller coaster. They know how to put together a match. They know how to play off the crowd. They know how to do everything like that. So why is it that John Cena and AJ Styles could do a fourth match on the card and these guys are one of the many, many main events in that, you know, thing in that episode and for the world title and yet they weren't able to do it the crowd was dead why i i seriously think wwe is telling them no 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 you're not going to say no to john cena and aj styles those guys have stroke so they're uh you know if they're saying hey we're gonna kick out of all of our finishers and do all these false finishes and you know basically put on a wrestlemania type match fourth match on the card no title no stipulation whatever WWE creative, if if Dolph Ziggler and Dean Ambrose said, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to kick out of finishers, we're going to knock out the ref, we're going to do all these things to make this match great, WWE creative would have just been like, uh, no, 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 this is your spot, this is, this is all the level you're supposed to give, because you still have to save it for the universal title match, and you have to save the crowd for Brock Lesnar versus Orton. So they are telling one group of guys to go out there and steal the show, and they're telling another group of guys that if you dare try to steal the show, there will be repercussions. That's why I don't think WWE has the actual talent. 
because the wrestlers are not allowed to exploit the talent. Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, they're boring. This time next year, they're still going to be the same characters, putting on the same matches, doing the same moves, getting the same pops, getting the same... what? It's boring. Jericho is allowed to reinvent himself with new gimmicks, new catchphrases, and whatever. And, you know, he's obviously had ups and downs of popularity, but he's still relevant because he has stroke. These guys don't have stroke. All these Ambrose, Rollins, Zane, Ziggler, all these guys, they're, they are under the thumb of WWE completely. They are puppets on strings. And this segues into the last part is a lack of actual physical bodies in the ring. The reason we're seeing these same old matches is because their roster is fucking depleted. It's depleted of wrestlers because of injuries and wellness policies. And now if you have a concussion, you're not allowed to work. If you have a sprained ankle, you're not allowed to work. Um, If you pull a muscle, you're out for like three weeks. Shit like that. What back in the day, guys used to work through that. And I I totally agree with that. Um, Whatnot. But it's hard for a wrestler to get over and stay over if he's not on the programming day in and day out, elevating the bar week after week after week. People are already saying like someone like Brock Lesnar is already boring. He only wrestles two times a year. It's like, how can he be boring? Well, he's boring because his matches have all the same. The Suplex City gimmick is old. When you start taking your talent that wants to be creative, that wants to go out there and have a good show, that wants to get better, that wants to constantly elevate the envelope, you know, and is constantly trying to keep up with the ever-changing social media changes and storylines because that's the problem people are like oh wrestlers nowadays they work too fast they work too hard they need to slow down that way when they do something good the crowd pops more it means more yeah i get that but at the same time the storylines need to fucking slow down uh world titles um get fucking thrown back and forth and exchange like fucking pokemon cards um angles and feuds and rivalries and storylines you go through a dozen fucking different angles a fucking year that is just like good god you know who needs to slow down is the fucking writers the creative them always trying to keep up with social media changes them drastically changing shit for no reason i mean how do how do every fucking feud and rivalry in wwe now it's all the fucking same it's oh these guys have three matches and then by the next pay-per-view they're wrestling completely other guy you know they're wrestling on raw twice and then they have like a segment and then they have the pay-per-view match and then the next month it's a different rivalry and the next month it's a different rivalry you know it's it's going way too fucking fast. And all these uh, rivalries start with random run-ins. Oh, these two are having a match. Oh, this comes out of nowhere and beats them up. It, it, case in point, Carmella uh, jumping Nikki Bella. Everyone's like, oh, it's a double turn, which it was a good double turn. Nikki needs to be a face. Carmella is, will be a great heel. But it's just like, snap the fingers. Oh, there we go. That starts the feud, right? A random, unexplained run-in beat up. Okay okay whatever you know distraction roll-ups ending matches left and fucking right there's at least three distraction roll-up fucking victories on wwe television every week and most of them spur feuds and it's like that's 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 creative bullshit so when the creativity is not there because wwe doesn't know what they're doing they never have known what they were doing The only time, like I said, they've ever gotten over is when they utilize talent that was brought up through the territory system. So they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They have more misses than hits by far. Uh, 90% of the content that they make is forgotten about within a year. Most of the shit they do on their big events like WrestleMania, SummerSlam, the Royal Rumble, it all um, culminates into nothing within weeks. Usually within a month. Usually within that night. Look at WrestleMania. A six hour long show. Where I'd say 75% of it. You know what? I'm going to go more than that. I'm going to say 100% of that show is irrelevant. Now. Six months down the road. Irrelevant. Not even talked about. Because nothing from that show. Is brought up to this moment. SummerSlam 2016. Everything that happened at SummerSlam 2016. Is irrelevant. 
The only thing that would have been relevant was Finn Balor winning a universal title, but he ended up getting injured. Everything was irrelevant. In one night, everything that they built towards for this big event is irrelevant. And you know they're going to do it with Royal Rumble, and you know they're going to do it the next WrestleMania. So most of the shit that they come up with is irrelevant to be forgotten crap because it's moving too fast. But wrestlers are really starting to speak out about it. And it's almost starting to work its way into storylines because, you know, CM Punk made that famous, that work shoot angle. But they're going to run out of physical bodies of talent if they keep losing people through discrepancies because the really good wrestlers, the ones that they know are good, that are getting held back, don't don't take it. They leave. They're like, oh, you can't make a living elsewhere. Yeah, you can't make WWE money unless you're in WWE. But if you're a good wrestler, you can make a living wrestling on indie circuits and you know ring of honor in japan and even walt culture you know there's paydays to be made outside of wwe if anyone tells you oh you can't make a living wrestling outside of wwe tell that to aj styles now aj styles popularity is more popular than ever before because of the wwe reach and marketing i mean people in zimbabwe didn't know who aj styles was until he got to wwe you got to remember that so the popularity of WWE turns you into a star which then you can go to Japan and you can go you can even go to UFC if you're an actual athlete look at CM Punk CM Punk could have made a living in Japan he could have made a living doing what AJ Styles did he could have been in the Bullet Club but he decided to go to UFC I think it's because he just didn't want to wrestle anymore I think after UFC um I think this fight for CM Punk is one and done and I think he'll transition back into wrestling he won't be in WWE but he'll be able to make a living you know around the world wrestling doing what he knows how to do but cm punk left the company because of creative differences and the way they were treating him cody rhodes left that way ryback left that way um another talented wrestler alberto del rio left because yes he had a wellness policy suspension and he's like i'm not coming back after that because you know it does take the wind out of your sails but before that who the, who the fuck was he what was he doing he was doing nothing So all their good wrestlers, one by one, are leaving and they're not getting replaced by good wrestlers. Which is why they're having to call up people from NXT that are greener than shit. People like Nia Jax and Dana Brooke and even Apollo Crews. Like, they don't have that fucking big match mentality. They don't, they barely know how to wrestle. Apollo Crews knows how to wrestle. But they, you know, they're crap. They don't belong on the most successful largest media mogul fucking wrestling organization in the world they don't fucking belong there they don't there are people that aren't there that belong there more than they do but wwe doesn't have a choice because their roster is thin because of injuries and the ability to not work but also because they're good wrestlers they're driving them away damian sandow got drove away well he got released You know, another talent wasted. They keep throwing away talent. And mark my words, within three years, Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, even Dean Ambrose, Dolph Ziggler, those guys are going to be put into obscurity. It wouldn't surprise me if someone like Sami Zayn or Kevin Owens or Dolph Ziggler, well, maybe not Dolph Ziggler, but like Sami Zayn or Kevin Owens aren't even working for WWE anymore. Like, that would not surprise me because they're driving away talent. So they don't have the talent to put on a good product to get people from changing the channel. They don't have the creativity. They don't have the talent in the wrestlers and they don't have the actual physical body talent because the good talent is is gone it's it's, it's, or they're being misused and obscured you have our truth and gold dust those guys are really good workers and they're fucking you know shot into obscurity i know people like to say oh zach Ryder needs to be utilized more zach Ryder is he's a he's 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 what's so good about him like in the ring or on the mic what is so good about him Yes, I was a fan of his internet show too, and I thought he was cool, and I like him, but 
you know, what's so good about him? Does he deserve to be treated as more than just a jobber? Yes, I, I understand that. And right now with the hype bros, he's getting more of a push. And I could seriously see him winning the tag team titles on SmackDown, which would be cool. But, you know, I don't see anything so spectacular about him. I, 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 I just don't see this. But so WWE is honestly, I think over time, WWE is going to be less about entertainment as far as in the ring matches and angles and just media promotions and this and that and making more movies and stuff because yes the product as far as the wrestling product does stink it's always sucked wwe has always sucked and now because of you know shoot interviews and podcasts and we're able to see behind the wall of kayfabe that wwe was hiding behind now you're starting to see that, yeah, it's always sucked, but now we're starting to see why. We're starting to learn faster than ever, you know, political differences backstage, creative differences backstage, and wrestlers um, able to voice their opinions, you know, faster. So anytime there's a wrestler coming out saying, oh, WWE is bad and this is why, or they mistreated me, that, that information gets shot out there and it can't be taken back. As before, where when a wrestler would make a claim against WWE, uh, Vince McMahon would go on the Larry King talk show or on a daytime talk show and try to squash those those bad things said. And now it's like, oh shit, information gets out there so fast, so quickly. So people like even like Paul Heyman, I know he's difficult to work with because he's a sneezy snoozy promoter. But the guy is a creative genius, no doubt about it. He's always trying to keep up with the times. He should be utilized more than just an on-air, you know, a couple times a month mouthpiece. But WWE's like, oh, we can't work with this guy. He's really hard to work with. Yeah, because you, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. That's what it is. I mean, yes, he might be hard to work with for you, but that's the price of being a creative genius is you don't click with other people the same way because if you were thinking like them you'd be just as shitty as them that's what makes Paul Heyman a step above and beyond that's why he was able to do what he did albeit for a such short period of time Paul Heyman has found a lot of success in wrestling through every aspect from a promoter to an on-air talent to a writer to an owner to marketing distribution to advertising as a photographer Paul Heyman's done it all as, an, uh, as a commentator, he's done it all. Would you want to utilize that guy more as this uh, twice a month on-screen talent? No more, no less? No, because he's hard to work with, WWE says. Get over it. He, he turned SmackDown into a show over Raw on WWE. So it showed that unlike w ECW, where he didn't have the means to compete, when he was giving, when he was given an equal playing field to compete with WWE, you know, with Raw, you know, he was given all the tools that he didn't have in ECW. He was able to do it on SmackDown. And he was able to find success. Was he difficult to work with? Yes, but can you argue the results? No. So I, I mean, creatively, I, I don't, I don't know what WWE is doing, and if people are waiting for this miracle to happen, it's never going to happen. Because even if they do get good workers and good wrestlers, eventually they get pushed into obscurity. AJ Styles is having a good push right now, but I think myself and a lot of Fans are just waiting for the day where WWE is like, and you're obscured, and you're a nobody, and you're a veteran, so now you're a jobber. You're like the Dudley Boys. You're like Zack Ryder. You're like Dolph Ziggler. You're an enhancement jobber. People will still like you, and we'll keep you around, but you're there to do the jobs forever. But maybe they'll keep AJ Styles happy because... He's so respected and revered in wrestling that if he was ever to say anything about bad about WWE, I think AJ Styles could actually get fans to turn off the TV. 
That's how much stroke he has in wrestling. And he's able, and has been proven, that he can make a good living not in WWE. He never had to go through developmental. Even Seth Rollins and Sami Zayn and all these great indie workers, and even Shinsuke Nakamura had to go through uh, NXT and Florida Championship Wrestling or whatever. AJ Styles never did. The Bullet Club never did. Because they're good. They're that good. WWE, I think, will catch on eventually when Vince McMahon dies. I think the the product will be good for all ages. Because to be honest, blaming it on a PG thing that that that's that's a cop out. It doesn't need to be rated R to be good. It doesn't, and it's that's been proven time and time again. Because wrestling's been mainly PG throughout its entire existence. It doesn't need to be rated R to be good. And I think Triple H honestly might be the savior of WWE. I really do think that. Is he self-absorbed and are these problems with him? And there's, Yeah, I I get it. He's still the click. He's still a a backstabber, conniving, whatever. I get it. But at least he likes the business. He likes wrestling. And I think he likes to give the fans what they want to see because there's no sense in not giving us what we want to see right I mean if a company makes a bad movie and no one goes sees it you know what what what, what is that company going to do what is Universal going to do if they make a bad movie and no one's going to go see it are they going to make a sequel no people aren't, aren't going to pay to see something if they don't get a payoff You know, so show people what they want to see. Give people what they want to see. Yes, you can tease it and get some heat built on it, but stop doing the exact opposite of what people want to see and disappointing them on a you know, time after time, month after month. It's disappointment after disappointment after disappointment. Why? Why are you doing that? Why are you making it so people don't want to watch your product? I don't get that. Why can't you make people feel good? What's wrong with that? I think Triple H honestly understands that. I really do. Because if you look at NXT, grant you NXT is very much geared towards the smart mark audience. But you can still be a wrestling fan and not know anything about the indies and all that other shit. All that unmainstream shit. And still watch the NXT wrestling and most of their angles and be like, hey, it's good. Hey, and it's rated PG. Hey, Triple H knows what he's doing. I think it proves, NXT proves that WWE, NXT is what wrestling can be and quote unquote should be and it works. And Raw and SmackDown are proof that they choose not to do it. Because NXT really is its own brand. It's its own world. It does not feel like WWE. So it's like, why wouldn't you copy a model that has a higher approval rating? And why would you try to transfer that model into Raw and SmackDown? Why wouldn't you try to do that? It's not like they're losing money. It's not like it wouldn't make money anyway. Because WWE is going to make the same amount of money whether they put on fucking Doink the Clown and gobbledygooker right now as they do if they put on AJ Styles and John Cena people aren't turning on the fucking TV or they're not staying to watch it simple as that so make people feel good the reason Rock and Austin worked and the reason Stone Cold got over is because he made people feel good Hulk Hogan made people feel good the definition of a babyface might change as society changes but make people feel good Roman Reigns, maybe in five years, he'll finally get over, just through tenure. But if he's not making people feel good, then why keep pushing him? Push somebody that makes people feel good. Simple as that. Make people feel good. Go for it, WWE. Let the talent be talent. Let let the cream rise to the top. And hopefully you'll do more with less. 
because I, I will say there's a huge shortage of, of, of good wrestlers in the world. Because, one, they're, they're spread pretty thin over all the companies all over the world. But, two, I, I, I just think it's a different time. Not as many kids want to grow up to be wrestlers anymore and actually are good at it. I understand that. So, do more with less by really accentuating the talent. Accentuate the positives, hide the negatives. Make people feel good. 